want him to be able to auto-generate that stuff himself. Right, because often Unity and Visual Studio will optimize uh, the game uh, based on the specific platform uh, that you're playing it on at that point. Yeah, um, but it's going to be more around what kinds of builds I've done. Am I using uh, Unity VS? Mm -hmm. Have I done specific settings into my Visual Studio? Am I using the light theme? Am I using the dark theme? Right, preferences. How did I split my windows up in Unity? I don't really want to force those settings onto uh, Voils because he has his own workflow. Yes. So those are really important things. Um, and then the Git operates the same way with their Git ignore file. Yes, so Git has the same kind of thing. It's instead of TF ignore, I believe it's dot .git ignore or yes. git dot ignore, something along those lines. You'll be able to see it in your project structure if you use that. I believe they use a very similar uh, format. Yep. Um, so if we take a look at uh, my screen again, you can see what we have actually checked in. We have the assets, the build process templates, which we're not really going to talk about today, and the project settings. So if we uh, expand the assets. You can see I've got audio, I've got editor, um, which is plug-in type stuff. Rise of the Doe is a completely another project. Um, but these are going to be the kinds of things that I check in. And uh, when we uh, connect to the team project, you want to go to team, this little team button up here, okay. and go to connect to team foundation server. I see when you pop up on the right hand side there. Exactly. So you'll get what's called the Team Explorer. If you're using Visual Studio Express, this is kind of your main living point for uh, doing any of your version control. Um, when you come into this fresh, you won't have already connected. You'll see this little plug button. It says Connect to Team Projects. You can click that, or you can do Select Team Projects. If you click Select Team Projects, Right now, I'm connected to it already, and I have it in here. If you don't have this, you click Servers, and you can select Add. So what it's going to be is the name of your uh, instance that you did. Mine is Giro, G-E-R-O dot Visual Studio dot com. So you'll type whatever the name of your project is, or your project collection, dot Visual Studio dot com. And uh, once you add that, you can get access to it, and you can see I've got my impact, Day of Unity stuff, Project Jiro, Jackround, and some stuff that I just test on. Um, and we're working on Project Jackround, so I click the checkbox, I click Connect. We're already connected to it. And um, once I do that, I can uh, click this uh, here and Add Items to Folder. This is going to be the important part. If you're doing an initial check-in, you'll do Add Items to Folder. Okay. And you'll go and find the different items to the folder. It'll show you everything that's in that folder as it is. Um, you can do your assets, and then you're going to do your project settings, and you're going to ignore everything else. And then you'll do your initial check-in. So this is you're now taking everything that's stored locally on your machine, and you're pushing it to the cloud so that someone else can grab it at a later time. Exactly. And uh, actually, to demonstrate this, we put uh, I've already checked it in, and we uh, deleted everything off of Mr. Dave Voyle's box. So what we want to do is show the actual pulling of that and uh, show the project actually running on that box. And okay. uh, we haven't really tested this too well, so we're kind of crossing our fingers that it uh, it let's works see. out live. So let's uh, flip over to Mr. Voiles and see how it goes. Do you want to do a pool for us? Sure. Right now, we can see I'm in Visual Studio. I have my Team Explorer over here on the right-hand side. And you can see I have jiro.visualstudio.com, and I'm currently connected to the Jack Round product, project. One thing to also note is if you look at his local path, uh, right now we've mapped it at least. Um, it'll say not mapped if you haven't mapped it before. You click on that link, and you uh, select the folder that you want to map the project to locally. Um, pathing in uh, Windows limits to 254 characters. So I like to put things at C colon backslash project, something very very simple and very short. Right. So right here we have local path, like Dave mentioned, uh, currently mapped. But if I go to that folder itself, I can open it up and I can see there's nothing in there at this point. However, I can look online and I see uh, at our, our source repo, I have an assets folder, build process, project settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these things, which I, which I can see he last put in on the 25th, and I'm then going to pull them down and push them in, put them in my folder. So right here. I right click on Jack Round, and then Get Latest Version. It's going to do, it's going to pull down any changes, and you're going to see it update right here. So it's downloading everything, and I can see. Yeah, let's switch over to the File Explorer and see how that's looking. 
So let's see how this file explorer looks. And it's starting to pull down all the assets, project process templates, and even the TF ignore file. That's a really good one to make sure it's checked in. It gets checked in automatically, um, but if you notice that that's not getting checked in, that's something that needs to make sure that you're there so other people aren't checking in garbage. Right, so from here, I can take the project he has just worked on, go to scenes, level one, it's gonna load up Unity. And what it's doing now is it's building the local cache of those assets in accordance to the meta file. So that could take some time. This is a fairly small 2D platformer project that we built, I mean, really, really quickly. So um, it should load everything, well, pretty quickly. <laughs> and you can see I took that whole project that was on his machine, he then pushed it to the cloud, I can press play, and here we go, we have our project. Yeah, let's maximize running. that. And, um, and to talk about some of the things for Mr. Matthew, just do it. <laughs> this is all paint.net. Um, made sure I just did something that was really simple. It's really buggy, but you know, if you have a uh, poor art style and it's all kind of together collectively, it can actually look kind of good and kind of mobile -ish. And look, there's that slow button we were talking about before in effect. I can unslow and then slow. Yep, so I, I did implement that, I guess. Uh, See, so I should probably log that in my features. <laughs> yeah. So it shows you how easy it is for uh, David to save a project, push it to the cloud, and then I can pull then any changes that he immediately makes right there. Exactly. So now we've talked about doing project management. We've talked about source control. I think one of the next more important pro uh, things to talk about is going to be workflow. Um, this is huge. Um, you want to make sure that your teams are doing things in a way that makes sense, that they're not stepping on each other's toes. And how do you actually go about that, doing that? And uh, some of these are going to be Unity specific. Some of these can be applied across the board to different organizations. Uh, if you're building software, you need to follow some sort of process management and workflow when you're actually developing your product. So uh, for Unity specifically, we want to look at um, my slide deck and say, be wary of the uh, binary assets. Um, so there's something that you can do uh, to make sure that they're not necessarily binary. You can uh, go to that same setting where we set the meta files to be visible. You can force text on them. That will allow them to be mergeable, but it's still very, very difficult. So uh, sometimes it's nice to force uh, binary just so that somebody, when they try and check it in, they see the conflict and they're like, oh God, I should never do that again. Right. Um, so scenes, prefabs, those are some of the things that you do that for. When you uh, actually do work, you want to pull your changes first. You're going to want to do work. Then I like to pull my changes again, merge the conflicts, test, and check in. So if I'm working on a file, chances are that somebody else on the team might be working on the same file. They might be working on the same scene. You know? right. Maybe we're uh, trying to test out the axe versus the sword. So Dave start, opens up a scene, level one, and I open up level one, and we decide I'm going to give the character a sword, and Voiles gives the character an axe. So I pull in all the changes, I do some work, and uh, Voiles does some work too. Let's say Voiles is a lot faster at doing work than I am. So he goes ahead, he pulls changes, sees nothing wrong has happened. He merges any of the conflicts, there weren't any, tests it, works great, checks it in. Perfect. So I'm, however, at this uh, second portion where I'm doing work. Um, so I've done work, I've done stuff with a sword instead of an ax, and I pull changes again, and I get a lot of conflicts. I get scene conflicts, I get code conflicts. Yeah. You know, maybe we had an interface for what a weapon actually is. And uh, during Dave's testing, he found out that, hey, we need to change this interface because we need to make sure that all weapons have handles. You know, all weapons have handles. And maybe all weapons can be thrown too. Mm. So yeah, you gotta have throwable weapons. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when I pull those changes, I didn't think all weapons should be thrown. So I see in this list of changes that Dave said, oh, all weapons should be thrown. So I merge those conflicts and when I test, I find out that my sword doesn't actually implement that interface. So if I check that in, I would break everybody's build across the entire team. Uh -oh. So yeah, you can't break the build. We have alarms that go off in some of our teams <laughs> where uh, if you break the build, everybody's coming down to your office and yep. putting funny cardboard cutouts. Looks like you're <laughs> buying dinner tonight. Exactly. So you need to make sure you test after merging those conflicts. I can't stress enough. Uh, people get really angry about when you break the build. And uh, 
Rightly so. That can uh, really mess up a lot of things for other people. You have a huge code base. You mess up one thing and the code doesn't compile. All of a sudden, your team can't do work. So if you're working in a global environment and um, I'm checking out at five o'clock, I check in my code, I go home and I'm taking care of the kids, I'm eating dinner, I'm doing whatever I do during my home life, and uh, my global team in a different time zone comes in in the morning to do more work, then uh, the code's broken. What are they going to do? They have to wait for me to come back the right. next day. That's an entire day lost a code break, or they have to go and analyze that code themselves. And you can have the same issue with assets. So definitely, pull changes, do work, pull changes again, merge conflicts, test, check in. Um, the reason I like to do pull changes again, just like I said, is uh, you never know what happened in the middle of doing work. Um, you could infinitely pull changes, but merging conflicts takes a lot less time than doing work. So that's kind of why I like to pull changes, do work, pull changes again, merge conflicts, test, check in. I'm going to say that a lot. Yeah. Um, I almost want to print it out and put it on our board as we're working. Exactly. <laughs> Conflict resolution. So we kind of talked about this a little bit. We'll throw the slide up. Uh, binary assets uh, cannot be resolved cleanly. It's not a text file. It's a bunch of bits and uh, uh, your merge tools don't know what to do with this. You know, and it says, I don't know what this means versus this. But if it's serialized in a XML type format or a text format, then all of a sudden you have something where you can take a look at it. Mm -hmm. So in scenes, the order of your objects in a scene doesn't necessarily matter. So you can take a look at it with a merge uh, tool and you can see, oh, Voil's just added an ax and I just added a sword and uh, they're both not marked active. So we can say, okay, it's fair enough to keep both those objects in there attached right. to the character. That's perfectly happy. So we're fine to go ahead and merge that. Um, the meta files, if you don't split those off, you're going to have issues in your library folder. So make sure that you split those off. We can take a look at it and we can see that, oh, we both modified the import settings. You know, Foil said 75%, I said 50%. Well, now we can go and have a uh, meeting during our standup, take a look at the board and say, hey, we really need to mark this at yeah. 60%. Um, and then we can also talk about should we modify the source asset or should we modify the uh, import settings? What's the advantages and disadvantages of doing it either way? Um, so really important stuff to make sure you split that off. So having these things serializable opens the uh, opportunity for more discussion with your project. Okay. Um, so again, the meta file, I mean, I guess I can't stress this enough. Uh, this really should be ma mandatory to split this guy off. Um, you know, let's assume uh, asset once, yeah, we just talked about this. Asset one, source doubled in size by person one. Asset one, halved inside merge conflict and library. Uh, if you take the meta file from person one, the asset is doubled in size. Um, if you take it from person two, asset remains the same size. Okay. So, um, you know, one thing to be aware of. Um, and meta file strikes again, number two. So scene one created by person one, scene two, modifications by person two. Um, if you don't split the meta file off, all of those are going to be stored in the same file in your library and it's going to all be a binary. You have no idea what you're actually doing. So yeah. you need to make sure you split those off so this doesn't happen to you. Um, I, I was working on a 48 hour game jam and uh, one of my guys was uh, building the title scene and I was working on level one. It was actually this project. This came out of a game jam. And, uh, you know, in 48 hours, you're not thinking, I need to split the meta files off. And uh, we didn't. So what happened was at the end of the game jam, we went to merge our stuff together. Uh -oh. And uh, we broke the entire project and we didn't make our entry on time. So, uh, you know, lesson learned again, even on small 48 hour events where you're just yeah. trying to crank stuff out, I can't stress how important that is. Um, the other important thing, excluded changes. Um, you know, you're going to go and you're going to add a bunch of stuff um, and it's not going to get picked up like you do on normal uh, projects. You're not adding it to the project file. TFS works really well with uh, standard .NET C Sharp type uh, projects. So it checks that uh, .cs proj file. So um, you're going to see at the bottom when you perform a check-in that uh, there might be detected 
1,265 ads and two deletes. Um, I'm pretty sure you can imagine what would happen to the project if I forgot to add those 1,265 ads. Um, somebody's not going to get whatever plugin I just yeah. installed. <laughs> uh, that looks pretty indic uh, pretty uh, familiar of a plugin. You check in plugins, you're going to get a lot.